I'll be honest, I'm not a particular fan of European business class. It's literally just the same seat as in economy. Sure, there's more check bag allowance, lounge access, and food and drink included. But is that really worth paying for on a short flight? Well, fortunately again, I'm not this time, as it's part of a larger award ticket. Having flown Lufthansa and KLM Euro business before, now it's Air France's turn. What's it like to fly on Air France's A319 in business during a pandemic? Let's find out on this quick flight from Paris to Athens. Same disclosure as my last Air France video. The camera with most of my footage of the cabin was stolen, so I'm going with what I got. It gets better after this video chronologically, promise. Landing in paris Cher de Gaulle, I had about an hour to make my connecting flight to Athens. From a remote stand on the north side of the airport, I took a bus to the southern concourse 2E. From there, I had to get to 2F. Fortunately, there's a dedicated corridor, but I was hoofing it through passport control and reclearing security. My ticket would have let me into the Air France lounge in 2F, but there was no time for that. Plus, I already covered it in a KLM video. Boarding was already well underway when I arrived at the gate. In addition to the document and vaccine card check, they were also checking for the Greek passenger locator form. You need to fill out this form no later than the day before. At midnight, the day of your arrival Greece time, they will email you a barcode. This is what you need to board a flight. Go ahead and screenshot it to be safe. I've covered Air France's A319 in economy before, and you'd think these seats would be the same. However, rather than those fabric seats, this particular aircraft had faux leather ones throughout the cabin. Honestly, they weren't that bad. Yes, they were a bit dirty, but legroom wasn't bad, and there was USB power in the arm, though sadly no full power. I was hardly the only one rushing to make a connecting flight, and we actually held at the gate for 15 minutes with the door open to allow passengers to make it. Yes, I hate being late, but I think it was the right decision for sure. We pushed back and taxied towards the runway. On the way, we saw a sad retired Air France A380 naked on the way to the scrap heap. What a shame. Flying time was 2 hours and 45 minutes at 35,000 feet. Sadly, I lost all the footage of the meal, but it's worth mentioning. There was a choice of beef or pasta, and I went with pasta with olive tapenade. It was served with quite the spread, including a side of smoked salmon, hummus, and a brownie. It in fact was quite decent, perhaps not as good as what I just had on a long haul 777, but surprisingly good, and better than anything served on a US airline, domestic or not. We first flew over the Alps, before the Dolomites, and entered Italy. I had selected the left side of the plane to get a view of Venice, but today we flew north of the city instead. So instead, here's some footage of Trieste. As we flew down the Dalmatian coast, I dozed off. There is in-flight entertainment and Wi-Fi on board, though it's frankly not the greatest. Just like long haul, there's various packages, but 20 euros for a flight of less than 3 hours? Pass. There's also some streaming entertainment, but there's only a single English channel and one in French. You can't access the same entertainment library that's on the screens of long haul aircraft. Come on, so many airlines have this by now, try and keep up Air France. Still, progress is progress, I guess. I awoke just as we crossed into northern Greece. We flew over Thermopylae and Euboea, before swinging west of Athens. We got a great view of the city, before landing from the south.
From there, I headed through the Greek bureaucratic COVID process, which was completely pointless, and no one even checked that my form was valid. Oh well, the US doesn't either. So Air France A319 business class. Would I still pay for it myself? No! But it was a very enjoyable flight. The crew was friendly, the food surprisingly decent, and it went off without a hitch. As for whether KLM or Lufthansa is better, I think the food was better than Lufthansa, but nearly anything is after all, and my KLM meal was breakfast and there wasn't much to go off of. But as a free leg tacked onto a longer business class flight? Sure, it's great. See, I can be positive sometimes, I promise. Thanks for watching. If you liked this video, click that button and please subscribe for many more flight reviews to come. I'll see you on the next one.